One of the characteristics of the autonomic nervous system, and for that matter, anywhere within the nervous system, is that we get some convergence and some divergence. Uh, convergence, simply put, is when we've got um, multiple neurons synapsing onto a single neuron. This funnels information inward to one uh, neuron. And uh, by convergence, we, we lose some information, but that loss generates a stronger signal here. So imagine, if you will, that each of these neurons generate an EPSP. Well, each of those EPSPs will sum to give us a supra-threshold, supra-threshold action potential, our graded potential here, which will give us our action potential. So while location knowledge is lost, um, it results in a um, more likely to fire an action potential. It's going to generate a response here. On the other hand, um, divergence shown up here is when a single neuron um, branches. We've seen this before. Think of the skeletal motor neuron system and how some of these branches can be up to 3,000 branches, right? Here we just have two. But this divergence allows for multiple regions, multiple neurons, and then if we've got a target effector cell here, another effector cell here, what we end up getting is multiple segments or, or tissues being activated at the same time. So that um, divergence gives us um, mass activation where we can activate more than one region at the same time. And we do see this. Um, and for example, um, some of the digestive functions where we're going to activate a large segment of tissue and we need to do it in a coordinated fashion. And so we might get this uh, divergence that leads to this, whereas um, convergence, this is more likely seen when information is sent, say, to the brain, uh, maybe perhaps in the sensory nervous system where we're processing information and sending it onward. But we do um, potentially have this occurring in the autonomic nervous system as well. These patterns of activation are critical to how the autonomic nervous system functions, but as I mentioned, also critical to other regions of the nervous system. One of the characteristics of the autonomic nervous system is uh, the interesting looking synapses that we have within the autonomic nervous system. Now, so you'll remember in your traditional chemical synapse, we have a um, presynaptic cell, we have a postsynaptic cell, and uh, so the axon of that presynaptic cell terminates right here in the synapse. That's the nerve terminal. That's it. That's the end of the road, and that's where the action potential stops. It's then converted into a chemical signal by those neurotransmitters, which will generate a brand new electrical signal in the next neuron. The autonomic nervous system has a different type of synapse, and the synapse is found in the postganglionic neurons. I need to emphasize that. You're not going to find these in the preganglionic neurons, but in the postganglionic neurons, here's what we have, these varicosities. And what these varicosities are, are these little swollen little bumps or regions along the axon. So the axon doesn't terminate at the very end in a synapse like this. Instead, we have this segment of axon, which generates an action potential. That action potential reaches this varicosity, this swollen area here, causes the opening of those voltage-gated calcium channels. No matter where you're at, if you're going to get the release of neurotransmitter, you need calcium. Okay, so that's a always no escaping it. So those voltage-gated calcium channels open, they trigger 
the release of this neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. Here's the cleft, this region from here to here, that's the cleft. And notice my neurotransmitter will then activate these postsynaptic receptors here. And in this particular example, they're diagrammed as ion channels. And sometimes that's exactly what they are, but sometimes they're G-protein coupled receptors. We'll get a chance to talk about that in a second. But once all of that is done, so we've got calcium coming in here as well. Well, once we've got all of this process finished at this particular synapse, rather than be the end of the story, uh, another action potential is generated because this little segment here is also axon. And so the signal, if we go back over here, if you look at this, this is an interesting, interesting nerve. It's axon. It, it's here. You've got this axon here. Let's follow that. Here's got the swollen region here. So we're dumping neurotransmitter right there, picking up the ax, the uh, signal again, dumping neurotransmitter there, picking up the signal again carrying it onward. And look at these interesting branches and how we are essentially creating this net as this axon forms and converges and diverges again and how we've got this cool situation. Now it does eventually end. Here's my terminal, bump, bump, the end. But the electrical signal will travel to each of these varicosities and release neurotransmitter here and here and here and here and here and here giving a coordinated response in this tissue here because all of those smooth muscle cells will be exposed to neurotransmitter and the signal continues to migrate from segment to segment this is huge because what this does is maximize the efficiency of the signal rather than require one neuron for this cell and one neuron for this cell and one neuron for this cell i can activate all of these cells with one neuron by releasing neurotransmitter in little segments along the axon these little beads string of pearls that exist within the uh, autonomic nervous system in the postganglionic neuron. Both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic will do this. Okay, you need to remember that sympathetic and parasympathetic is going to both have these varicosities. Um, now at the varicosities, we're going to be releasing neurotransmitters. So we should take a look at some of those neurotransmitters and what's released. First, if we examine the preganglionic neurons, so we're back to these neurons here, okay? You can see my preganglionic neuron, and here's my ganglion, okay? In the parasympathetic nervous system, that preganglionic neuron is going to release the chemical acetylcholine. This is the same neurotransmitter, exactly the same, that is released in skeletal muscle and then that neurotransmitter is going to activate another neuron which will release acetylcholine at the target cell that's how parasympathetic neurons work sympathetic neurons on the other hand notice here's my ganglion okay once again, I have acetylcholine, okay? But my postganglionic neuron, let's look at that, that's going to release norepinephrine. And that's a trend that we see as well with acetylcholine always being released at the ganglion here, okay? And it doesn't matter whether it is... Um, parasympathetic or sympathetic, we're going to get the release of that acetylcholine at the ganglion. But for the sympathetic neuron, we're going to release norepinephrine, and the parasympathetic, we're going to release acetylcholine. 
The exception to this is right here. One of those sympathetic neurons releases epinephrine. That's because it's a modified nerve tissue and not exactly a neuron. And that's the one that's found in the adrenal medulla, which releases epinephrine.